I'm going to show you how to stop your landscape paintings from looking flat and more 3D. Let's get started. So I'm going to use the rule of thirds. So I've divided my photograph up into thirds, both horizontally and vertically. And where the lines intersect is a good place to place your focal point. So I'm going to show you how to draw a path that creates depth. So I'm using the letter S, making it small at the top and bigger at the bottom. So I've sketched out that scene with an HB pencil onto rough watercolour paper, 9 by 12 inches. And I put some washi tape around the edge. I've masked out the white farmhouse and the left hand side of each of the posts with masking fluid. The sky is the largest area to paint and it's going to be my first stage here. I'm actually going to paint the shadows of the clouds first, allow that to dry and then I'll paint the blue of the sky. It makes it easier rather than trying to do it all at once, especially if you're a beginner. So I hope you find this helpful. So I'm mixing up some cobalt blue and a little bit of magenta. You can use alizarin crimson, permanent rose, etc. A big puddle of that and then a little bit of raw sienna. You can use yellow ochre or even burnt sienna. Really nice big puddle. And I'm using a little bit of that wash now. It's going to be slightly paler and I'm adding a touch more of the raw sienna. And then I'm just using some raw sienna on its own here. So I've got three washes. So always prepare your washes before you wet your paper. I'm using a tape here just to tilt my painting to allow the sky to flow down more naturally. And I'm wetting the sky area with a large brush. When you're painting a large area, use a large brush. So I'm using lots of clean water and I'm painting down to the horizon and a little bit over the horizon so I don't get any hard edges on the horizon because hard edges come forward and I want that horizon to look far away. So that's something to look out for to make your paintings look less flat and more 3D. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load my brush with that first wash which is slightly darker than the other two because this is the kind of foreground here. It's the sky above your head, so it's the nearest sky to you. So you want the tonal values stronger, the shapes bigger, etc. And that just creates the illusion of depth. The bigger the shape, the nearer it looks. The smaller the shape, the further away it looks. So I'm just tilting there just to take off any excess paint. And now I've gone to a slightly smaller brush and I'm painting smaller cloud shadows underneath that large cloud as it goes into the horizon. So you want the spaces in between to be smaller as well. That's where your blue sky is going to go. So we're just painting the shadows at the moment. So the light and white of the clouds and the blue sky will appear later. I'm using a little bit of raw sienna just on the horizon. You get that lovely warm glow there on the horizon using my size 10 brush painting wet into wet. So you can see the large cloud shadow is str slightly stronger in tonal value. It gets paler as it goes towards the horizon and gets smaller as does the spaces in between. I've just mixed up a little bit more of a darker cloud shadow colour using the same colours. So I've taken the excess paint off. So this is slightly dark and I'm just adding damp into wet, a little bit of a stronger tonal value. If you look at the clouds in that, the cloud shadows in the photograph, they're quite sort of interesting. It's not just one flat dark. So I'm just adding a little bit more now of the burnt sienna, a little bit of the cobalt, touch of the pink, and just painting damp into damp here with my size 12 round brush, just to create some more interest in this large cloud in the foreground area of the sky. And just painting a little bit more cloud just underneath here and there, damp into damp, smaller marks, so they look further away. And as I go towards the horizon, I'm just painting lines and not sort of fluffy shapes. So it really does look much further away. The marks are smaller and paler. This really will make your sky look more 3D and less flat. So I am mixing up a little bit of cadmium yellow here with a touch of cerulean. Nice big puddle here. It's a yellow green. 
and I'm going to paint this in the foreground because I want the background area of the sky, the horizon part, to dry off a little bit. It's too wet to paint at the moment. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. So I'm using a big brush to paint all the sort of foreground fields and middle ground fields. Adding a little bit more of that blue, you can use cerulean or you can use thalo blue. And I've added a pinch of quinacridone gold. You can use raw sienna. I'm painting damp into damp with my size 12 round brush. Lovely big marks with this lovely warm colour in the foreground area here. So I'm concentrating on the foreground while I'm waiting for that sort of distance to dry off a little bit. And as you can see, I'm painting smaller marks as I go into the middle ground. I've mixed up some phthalo blue with quinacridone gold. So it's a really sort of mid to dark green. And I'm painting damp into damp with my size 10 brush. I just added a touch more quinacridone gold. It was a little bit too dark. I got a bit carried away. So these are really strong, dark tonal values. I've got some contrast here in the foreground, which will really bring it forward. In the foreground, you want textures, you want sort of strong lights and darks, bigger marks, bigger shapes, more details, and that will come forward. You want sort of paler marks as it goes off into the distance, smaller shapes, less details, cooler colors, warmer colors, reds come forwards, blues recede. So I'm just painting damp into damp, some darks at the edge of the path here as well. And also using the belly of my brush to create some textures. Got a little bit of dry brush going on there because my painting has dried off, especially on the right hand side. I'm just using my brush now, it's a clean damp brush, just to soften some of those marks as they go off into the middle distance and into the distance. So they're softer and paler and they recede and that creates depth in your painting. It stops it looking flat, which is what it's all about. Just painting some bigger grasses in the foreground. Using artistic license here, there aren't huge big grasses in the foreground in the photograph but by doing this it kind of creates a lot of detail bigger marks and it comes forward thus creating depth that's what I love about painting so I'm using my plastic card and I'm lifting off very swiftly the paint now you have to do this when the paint is damp and not too wet if it's too wet the paint runs back in on itself if it's too dry you won't be able to lift off and you just want to lift off once and swiftly do practice this technique. It's really fun to do. And as you can see, I've got bigger marks here in the foreground and I've made smaller marks as I go into the middle ground, again, creating depth. So I'm all the time I'm thinking about how I can make this look more 3D. So I'm mixing up a little bit of that shadow color now and I've added a touch of the green in there. So that is the cobalt blue with the pink with a touch of the raw sienna or burnt sienna. And then I've added some green, which is the phthalo blue with the quinacridone gold. So it's quite a few color mixes here. But if in doubt, just start off with a little bit of blue and add a pinch of yellow and you'll get a blue green. So I'm painting this on the horizon, damp into damp because that sky area now has dried off a, li a little bit, but it's still damp. So I'm adding a little bit of phthalo blue here because there's some sea to the left. I've actually sort of squeezed it in a little bit more again a touch of artistic license I've not slavishly copied that photograph I've kind of maneuvered things around a little bit to make my painting work sometimes when you copy a photograph exactly your painting can look quite flat so you've got to kind of maneuver things around to create the illusion of depth so I'm adding here a little bit more of the blue green damp into damp with my size 10 round brush just along the horizon there sort of like distant trees. Now you'll notice that the edges are soft because I'm painting damp into damp. And that's what's unique about watercolour. You get these lovely soft edges and soft edges recede and go back and hard crisp edges when you paint wet on dry come forward. So that's one of the benefits of watercolour painting. So I'm just adding a little bit more dark now around my focal point, which has been masked out. Because with your focal point, you want your almost your darkest darks to be against your lightest lights to really bring it out. So it goes against the rules. 
But in this instant, it's the correct thing to do to bring out that focal point. So I need to paint my darkest dark against my lightest light. Usually with something in the distance, my tonal values would be a lot paler. So what I'm doing now is I'm mixing up a big puddle of raw sienna here and I'm painting the path. You can use yellow ochre and this is wet on dry. It's quite pale. I want some light here. So really lead your eye into the painting. I'm mixing up some more shadow color. That's the cobalt blue with a touch of the magenta. You can use alizarin crimson. And this is to paint some shadows on the path, wet into wet here and there using my size 10 round brush. Smaller marks in the distance. And as you can see, that path really does lead your eye in. It looks bigger in the foreground as it narrows off into the distance, creating depth. I'm going to allow my painting to dry. So I'm going back to the sky area. So I'm making a big puddle of cobalt blue. And this is for the top of the sky. Now, this is really important. You must make sure your painting is dry because I'm going to re-wet my painting with clean water with a large, soft haired brush. You don't want to disturb the paint underneath. Watercolour is not permanent. So if the paint is still damp and appears to be dry, you'll get sort of tidal marks and back runs and smearing. But you can glaze over the top with water without the paint moving if it's thoroughly dry and if you glide over the top with clean water gently with a soft brush. So I'm loading my size 12 round brush and I'm painting the blue of the sky above, leaving a gap between the blue sky and the dark clouds where you've got the light at the top of the clouds there. And in fact, to stop it from running too much, I'm tilting the other way here to allow the blue paint to run to the top of the sky so it doesn't run too much into that light area. I've mixed up a slightly creamier blue and I'm painting damp into wet with my size 12 brush just to make that blue even brighter and stronger. Remember it's at the top of the sky, it's above our head, so we want it to be quite strong. I'm diluting the cobalt blue now and I'm painting the middle of the sky, the sort of middle ground of the sky. And I'm painting this wet into wet and you can go a brush size down if you want to, if you feel more comfortable. And I'm just working my way down now, kind of to the almost to the horizon using sort of smaller marks and a paler blue. So it, it looks like it's just going further away, it creates the illusion of depth. I'm using a paper towel to lift off some light at the top of the clouds while the paint is still wet. This will create sort of hard edges as well and that will come forward and that sky will look nearer to us and it will create more light. It will make those clouds look sort of bigger as well but brighter and there's a contrast between the, the top of the clouds with the blue sky as well thus bringing that forward. Don't you just love it? It just creates that illusion of depth. You're sort of almost like a magician here using these different tools to make a 2D surface look 3D. And the more you kind of practice these sort of techniques, the more confident you'll get using them and you'll start using them in your own compositions and you can design your own work. So I'm just painting a little bit of dark green, wet on dry, either side of that farmhouse there just to really bring out the light of the farmhouse once I remove the masking fluid. So I'm using my size six round brush. and I'm just working my way along the horizon, painting smaller marks, cool marks as well. It's about 80% blue with a pinch of yellow. So that blue will recede. So I've added a touch more of the quinacridone gold to the ultramarine here. I'm painting wet on dry to the right hand side and this is the middle ground. So I've painted quite strong sort of bold bushes here, as you can see in the photograph, just to really pull it away from that horizon line and the sort of distant trees and farmhouse. Adding a touch more dark now, adding a little bit more of the phthalo blue with the quinacridone gold and just sort of painting some bushes here to the left wet on dry and there's a little bit of dry brush going on here and that's when you use the belly of the brush and you don't have a big puddle of paint 
um, the, you haven't got much water in your washes. Um, if that's not working for you, just take the excess paint off on a paper towel to get the dry brush effect. You usually get quite nice dry brush effect when you've got rough paper or cold press paper. You saw there I took the excess paint off on my paper towel so I can create texture here. And can you see how that pulls away from the distance and the, and the sea as well? So it's quite magical. So I'm mixing up a little bit more dark here. You can use a touch of Payne's Grey in that green. I'm just adding a little bit of dark to those middle ground bushes to the left here. Um, just here and there and to the edge of the path wet on dry with a little bit of dry brush here and there just adding a few darker grasses wet on dry in the foreground it's a touch of dry brush going on there and also larger shapes darker shapes they come forward thus creating depth so using my size 6 brush and painting some smaller paler bushes sort of towards the distance here so it's just past the middle ground going towards the distance so smaller marks paler tones and sort of sometimes cooler colors I've just used a lighter green here adding a few more darks to the edge of the path as it goes into the middle distance using the tip of my size six round brush to create more interest here I'm using the plastic card to lift out some light the paint is damp and not wet and it creates a contrast for these sort of lighter branches to come through and that will really sort of bring this forward as well you've got contrast and you've got detail and I'm just adding a touch of sort of light to mid-tone here and then just blending it with a clean damp brush just to push it back a little bit but it just creates a bit of interest there for the bushes going off into the distance. I'm using some quinacridone gold and I'm applying it just here and there. It's quite a warm sort of earthy yellow and I thought it'd be quite nice to use in the sort of foreground area to pull it forward to create those warmer colours, more interesting shapes etc. As I said earlier, watercolour isn't permanent and I felt this area on the left was too dark. So I'm just using some clean water, my brush and just working into the paint to wake it up, as it were, and then lifting off the paper towel. And it just creates a lighter sort of colour underneath. I'm doing the same here at the sort of bottom right hand side of the path. And I'm just adding some quinacridone gold into those places there, damp into damp. And it sort of really pulls that area forward there. I've decided to add a little bit to the foreground here to the right hand side. It's such a lovely colour but if you don't have that colour you could use raw sienna or even yellow ochre just to sort of warm up the sort of foreground area. Warm colours come forward and that's why I'm doing that to create depth in my painting so it doesn't look flat. And I'm going to allow the painting to dry. And once it's dry, I have removed all of the masking fluid from the light of the posts and also the farmhouse in the distance. I've mixed up some ultramarine and burnt sienna to make a dark brown. I'm using my size six brush painting wet on dry the right hand side of the posts. As you can see, they get smaller as they go off into the distance. Keep it really, really simple. I'm mixing up some shadow colour here. That's the cobalt blue with the magenta, any pink will do, with a little bit of burnt sienna or raw sienna. So it's quite dilute and I'm painting wet on dry the shadows, the cast shadows of those posts there. Now there are cast shadows in the photograph. I'm not quite sure what they're from, but it looks quite effective here. And the bigger they are in the sort of foreground comes forward, again, creating depth, making your painting look less flat. So I'm going to paint the rooftop here. And instead of using the sort of grey roof tiles that are on the buildings, I'm using burnt sienna. It's artistic license. I want my focal point to really stand out and look warm. So I've painted the windows with ultramarine and burnt sienna, quite small, using my size four round brush. And I'm just painting painting a little bit of green just in front of the farmhouse there just to really ground it and I'm going to allow my painting to dry. Once the painting is dry I'm just painting some shadows on the right hand side of the farmhouse. Wet on dry with my size four round brush using a mixture of the cobalt blue, magenta and a pinch of the burnt sienna diluted. 
So I'm using some paper towel to protect my sky and the distance. I mixed up a little bit of the magenta here with some white gouache. You can use white watercolour paint and I'm spattering it in the foreground. This lovely sort of pink clover, which is very sort of characteristic of Milford on Sea. You get lots of it, especially springtime. So I thought it'd be quite nice to spatter this wet on dry in the foreground. If you don't like spattering, you can actually paint these in and I'm just painting them in stippling them basically in the foreground there so you can use white on its own you can use white with a little bit of pink and you can also use the pink or magenta on its own as well to make the color darker I'm just spattering a little bit more white to finish off my painting I really hope you found all the tips and techniques that I shared in this tutorial helpful. If you'd like to support the content I create here on YouTube, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? Details about the membership can be found in the description below, but you'll get access to weekly exclusive tutorials, downloadable outline sketches, and you can cancel any time. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Happy painting. Bye for now.